In the last video, we built an ECG amplifier. So I have electrodes on my wrists and elbow going to an instrumentation op amp and then a bandpass filter and an amplifier. And I've skipped the intermediate steps and on channel one of my Enscope, I'm just showing the filtered and amplified output of the data. So we can identify the classic PQRST curve to my heartbeat. And notice that there's still a good amount of 60 Hertz noise on this. I, I haven't uh, filtered um, a lot here. It's not kind of optimized. And it's also a good motion sensor. If I move around, <laughs> you can see um, the signal also is going to go up and down. So I'm trying not to move a whole lot as I'm uh, doing this talk. Um, the What we did uh, after we made this signal was using Enscope, we uh, captured this data using a CSV file, and then we were able to plot it and do FFTs and, and any kind of math we wanted to do in Python. But an interesting thing with Enscope is that we don't have to always use this CSV method. The data is coming in over USB and being stored on our computer in a buffer, and then the Enscope app is pulling that data and plotting it for us. So we don't have to use the Enscope app. We can use another programming uh, interface to grab the data from the buffer directly from Python. So let's see how that works. Um, this is called using an, uh, an API or application programming interface. And the uh, Python library for this is on Canvas. So grab that zip file, um, unzip that zip file, and put it into your working directory in Python. Um, note that the Enscope can only talk to one program at a time. So I have to close the Enscope app when I try to talk to uh, the Enscope device using Python. So uh, in my working directory is this folder called uh, Enscope uh, API. And it has all of the um, files that can read the Enscope data from the USB cable and bring them directly into um, Python. Here's uh, my example uh, for grabbing this data live. So we are going to uh, import a time library so we can know what time it is. Uh, we're going to grab our uh, matplotlib library so we can plot things. And here's how we open up the Enscope device. So we import the uh, Enscope API, and then we make a variable ns that represents the Enscope. Now, there's a lot of ways that this can fail. It's not plugged in, or the other program is open, or something like that. So this is in a try accept um, loop here. So it says, try to open the Enscope. Uh, if you're unable to print, uh, I'm unable to talk to the Enscope. If you uh, did open the Enscope, print this successfully opened Enscope. Sometimes this takes up to two or three seconds. So when you run your code, um, wait until you see this successfully open to Enscope. That's when uh, the rest of your code starts to run. So once this Enscope um, object has been created, we can talk to the Enscope. So we can say, set which channels we're going to read. So in this case, I'm reading channel one, but not two, three, or four. I set the sample rate. So how often is the Enscope collecting data? So here I've, I'm collecting data 100 times a second. And then I can request a number of data points. I'll request 400 data points. That means that we'll have four seconds of data collected. Um, I'm going to make some uh, blank lists to store the data. And then once I've made this request data, the Enscope starts sampling our signal and sending the data to the computer. So I can sit in this while loop that says while I've requested data, um, because this will take four seconds to collect all that data, the data is going to come in you know, one or two samples at a time. Um, so every time there is new data that comes in, probably at 100 hertz, because I asked for the data to be collected at 100 hertz, uh, I will read it out of the read data function. And the number in here is um, which channel I'm reading from. So I'm going to read from channel one and put that number into um, uh, a, a, a variable called D. And then I'm going to put D into my data list. But the Enscope does not send back what time that sample was made. Uh, we know that they're coming in at 100 hertz. So if I want, I could make my own time array and know that the samples are have been collected at 100 hertz. Or um, I can grab the time that this data was actually collected. So um, this will be the time the computer thinks it is when I collected this piece of data. And plotting this, you'd actually see that there's some irregularities because the computer's not running super linearly in time. But this is good enough for um, this kind of sampling. Uh, note that when you use the time.time .time function, to save what time it is, this is the number of seconds that have passed since 1970. That's just how this function works. So this number is very, very big. <laughs> um, and it's uh, it's a floating point number, so it's a decimal number. It's 
sub second resolution. Uh, so we're, we're recording uh, the data point that we just got and the time it is into our data and time arrays. And then I'll just plot it. So let me run this code. So I'm waiting for the uh, successfully opened Enscope message to appear. There it is. Now the four seconds of data collection has started, so I should probably not move very much. And then once it's uh, done, we see our plot. Um, notice the time scale. Uh, there have been many seconds have passed since 1970. Um, and we see the, the voltage um, that we got back from my amplifier. So we see the classic PQRST. So this is another way to collect data from Enscope where you don't use the CSV method. And the nice thing about it is that you can actually set the sample rate and how many data points you want. So you can be very specifically like, I want to collect you know, 10 data points uh, a second, and I could do that all day. I could set like 10,000 data points. And I could just leave a temperature sensor hooked up to Enscope, hooked up to my computer, and I could record the temperature in my room throughout the day. Uh, or I could set the sample rate to be 100,000 hertz. Um, and then a small number of data points, and I could see something with very, very small time resolution. Um, note that the Enscope has a lot of, um, uh, you know, this is an inexpensive device, right? So the sample rate here, um, you can't go infinitely fast. The fastest we really want to go is maybe 100,000 um, hertz. Uh, that's the analog input bandwidth of the Enscope. And the data that the Enscope can store internally in RAM is very limited, something around 2,000 data points. So um, if you are sampling slowly like this at 100 hertz, you could probably sample as many data points as you want. The Enscope is able to send the data out through the USB cable faster than the data is being collected. But once you start trying to get more than uh, 2,000 data points at a fast sample rate, there's a bottleneck in the USB and um, the old, the, you start to overwrite data before you can print it back to the computer. So um, something that faster than 2000 Hertz and more than 2000 data points is when things start to fail. So you can sample as fast as you want as long as you take fewer than 2000 data points. Um, keep that in mind. So for this lab, what I'd like you to experiment with is the fact that we don't have to wait for all of this data to be collected before plotting it. We could actually, as the data is coming in, write some code that detects a peak, uh, like you did with the CSV file. So edit your CSV code and add that if statement here um, so that as the data is being collected, you're doing that live analysis. And when you detect there's a peak, you could print, I just found a peak. Or even better, you can print the amount of time that has passed from the peak it found from the previous peak, and you can print your uh, beats per minute live with every heartbeat. So I've done that here. I won't show you my if statement, but I'll show, I can show you some of the code. And let me run it first. So I'm going to take uh, uh, at 100 hertz, uh, 1,000 data points, so 10 seconds worth of data. So I should get you know maybe 10 heartbeats worth of prints. We'll run this code. I'm going to try to stay still because we don't want too much drift. Okay, I ran the wrong piece of code. Uh -huh. That was the previous piece of code. What is this one's called? Oh, live ECG peaks. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we'll see our message. And scope's collected. We're starting to collect the data. With every heartbeat, it prints how much time has passed and then turns it into a beats per minute. And when I'm done, I print. Um, all, all of the data that I've collected, and I show where the peaks that, uh, where I thought the peaks occurred. Notice, uh, similar to my previous um, example using um, the CSV file, I seeded my uh, initialization with a time at zero, zero. So the first heartbeat time period is not correct. But each one after that, it's fine. And you know, if you wanted to write more and more code here, you could figure out how to avoid that kind of thing. Also notice that um, I, I was very still, so my code, my signal did not drift. That made it very easy to find these peaks. If you find yourself with a with a signal that um, has some low frequency drift, increase your high pass filter so that there's less drift. Or add another high pass filter after your amplifier. You can keep stacking more and more. And if you can't seem to find these peaks very well, you can over low pass everything so you basically got a big sine wave out rather than uh, the PQRST curve because we're still just looking for one pulse per cycle. Um, so you don't have to find this big peak. You could find the peak of the T if you over low pass filter here. Um, a couple more hints. 
Um, Time.time starts at, you know, how many seconds have passed since 1970. So when I seed my initial uh, peak voltage and peak time, I seeded it with uh, zero volts at time.time. .time. I didn't seed it with time of zero because time of zero would be way, way, way left on this graph. Um, what else did I do here that's interesting? Okay, so here's my blank data array and time array like before. I've made a, uh, uh, a, an array of peaks that I seeded with zero, uh, a time peak array um, that is seeded with the initial time. There we go. I'm carefully trying to hide my code so you can't see. Oh, there it is. Okay, but you're going to have to figure that out. Um, so every time I read a data point, the other thing I do is I keep a track of how many data points I have because I can use the negative one, negative two, negative three indices of my data um, to figure out what the slopes are and those things like that. So I need to make sure I've collected at least three data points before I can do some of this math. So I initially have zero data points. Every time I collect a data point, I add one to that variable. And then if I have more than three data points, I can then do my next if statement, which contains my uh, is the slope before a data point, positive is the slope after it, negative is the voltage itself over some voltage is the amount of time that's passed, certain amount of time, whatever you did in your CSV file. 